All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of The Patrol. We're picking up where we left off. It is later on that night, the last episode. But uh, the paint's dry on the uh, mount. Mounted our coolers onto it. You can see how it is. I just got to tighten them up. I lost a screw just there. But you can see how the old mount works. Just drilled the holes in the bottom rad support and just got to put some nut sights in them. And then we can mount this puppy up. Rex has painted up some of the other stuff, the shifter and that. Um, so we're working on just trying to get a bit more done tonight. All right, we are all mounted up. Looking awesome. Looking really nice. So you can see we've got that along the lateral, lateral which mounts to the vertical. That's not sorted. They're all not sorted. Not sorted underneath. Makes it easy. And just runs off these two threaded mounts. Easy as. Easy as that. Very nice. Very cool. Very nice. So run transline into tank, out of tank, into this cooler out of that cooler, into this cooler, out of that cooler, and then back to trans. Nice and cool. All right, guys, you wouldn't read about this. So that there, you can see, that is a bracket that we had in that box. It is out by literally like half a hole. If you didn't know anybody, you'd think it was made for a 6L80. And with this arm, Rex has calculated, if we drill a hole at that point with that bracket, um, this all should work how it's supposed to, but with a cable. So, anyway, that's, we're going to leave it tonight to 10 o'clock. So, it's been a long day. Another long day. They're all long days um, lately. So, anyway, this is why there was so little content for so long until you're watching this, obviously, because if you're watching this, I've actually gotten into making the content. So, I hope you're enjoying. But anyway, we're going to go home, come and attack it again tomorrow. All right, guys, jumping right back in this morning. Rex had a little bit of an issue with our shifter setup this morning because this uh, bracket that we intended to use for the actual selector on the gearbox, we don't know what it's made out of, but whatever it's made out of, it's freaking hard and you can't drill it. So we couldn't drill it shorter like we intended to. So Rex had to improvise and make a new bracket, which he has done and it's not on the gearbox, but I don't know where it is. It's around here somewhere. But anyway, he had to pretty much just make a new bracket from scratch for the arm for the actual select on the gearbox. Uh, the actual cable bracket still works fine. So that's pretty much sorted. And that is essentially our shifter setup sorted. All we need now is to actually buy a new shifter cable because the one that we use to dummy it all up and make it all is all well and good, but it, it's pretty screwed. So we're going to get a new one for him. So we've got a new cable, but that is his shifter setup modified now to a cable shifter and all going to work exactly where it needs to fit where it needs to be. Hopefully make it look nice and factory. So we're on to now trying to figure out the actual fascia to go around that shifter and see what we're going to do about it. We've got some ideas of basically trimming this up to suit. As you can see where it sits there, if it's in the center, it's way too far over. This fascia actually sits sort of around about there. So we're going to need to trim out this side here. We're going to need to trim that out. So it's probably going to be too far on this side. You know, there's going to be some problems. So we've got an idea to get some vinyl made and essentially get rid of this top fascia bit, cut this out to the size that we need to, to fit over our shifter plate here, and then essentially get a vinyl boot made that pretty much sits around the shifter fascia like so, so that you can still see all of your park neutral reverse, all that stuff, because all this will be hooked up and we should still have lights and everything and indicators and that should all still work. So we want to be able to see all that and just have essentially, we'll trim, we'll trim these mounts, these tabs off, and then just have a vinyl boot similar to our four wheel drive selector, which then goes down to the hole in this fascia just to cover that area. You know, it's only got to be sit there because all the shifting motion happens in here. It's not like on a gear stick where it moves around. It's just going to be a stationary vinyl boot, but it should actually just make it look a little bit more factory. The last thing you want is to have like a, an interior that looks all hacked up and bad. It's not what you want. You want to do a nice tidy conversion. That's what it's all about. So we're actually sorting that out. I finished mounting up the fans. So we've got them mounted. We've got some foam mounted underneath just to sort of block that area. And I've just put pinch weld down the sides where they mount. The front mounts flush on the flat surface, so that's all right. So these brackets sort of hold the fans in position and these are sort of just clamps to stop them from moving. And we've got another through bolt there. So plenty of mounting points, strong as, easy as. The only place they're really gonna draw air where they shouldn't is through these cutouts that I've made so that we could get at these things. But even then that shouldn't be much of a problem with how good these fans are and how much they draw. So the biggest thing was to make sure that that bottom was sort of sealed off because that's a lot of air, air through there. But 
the rest of it I'm not very worried about should be fine. So that's the fan sorted and mounted. So that's most of the, you know, the front end of the car sorted out. Just got to make the trans lines now to sort this out. But, uh, you know, that's all this sorted, fan sorted and rad. So making some, some nice little progress. So that's a lot of the big modification, like modification stuff out of the way. Still a few little things we've got to do. Like we said, move the uh, sway bar disconnect. We've also got to sort out the taco interface so that this factory taco and the cluster works. We've still got to drop the fuel tank and put the new fuel pump in, the new Walbro 255, but it's not a stock fuel tank in this thing. It's an aftermarket long range tank. So how I hope and dropping the tank's not going to be a big deal. We've still got to rip out all the gas system because that's going, the LPG system. And we've still got to do the diff, do the diff seal, sand the pinion seal and all that sort of thing. So still a bit to do, but it's, um, it's good progress to have these big modification things that we knew were going to be a problem. Nice and knocked on the head and out of the way fairly early on. We're rid of one big old gas tank. Another thing that's not really part of the conversion, but that the owners asked us to do as well. Um, just remove the gas system because he's not going to use it anymore. So that sort of sucked because I had to take off the tow bar to get the gas tank out which is a pain because snap the bolt that holds the tow bar in here. So that's gonna be a real fun extraction because they always are just real good fun. I love them. Rex is having some real good fun with all this plastic, trying to get the surround to work with the shifter. So it's, uh, it's funny, like they've got, you know, 25 plus year old plastic garnish and stuff like that. They're really brittle. And uh, the actual VE shifter, the plastic's even worse than the 25 year old plastic from the center console of the car. So that's telling you something. But anyway, it's really hard when you're working with really brutal plastics and stuff like that, but we'll see what we can uh, make it into. So got rid of pretty much all the gas line, which is awesome. Still haven't bothered with the snap bolt yet. Still gotta get to that, I'm not looking forward to it. But anyway, we are draining the fuel tank to get the fuel tank out so we can do that fuel pump. Rex has finished his shifter setup. As you can see, that's how it's gonna be. So now what we've got to do is organize a sort of cover boot thing to make it tie in and look factory. So we'll get onto that probably tomorrow. See how much time we've got. So we're just trying to get this tank out and it is a real pain in the ass. So like I said earlier, this is like an aftermarket tank, like long range. However, put it in here, really didn't think about anyone who'd have to be servicing it at all. It's been a pain to even get it to this point. We haven't even got it out yet. As you can see, hooks over this bar at the front, but it's against the rear trailing arm. So you can't go back, it's just an absolute dog's breakfast. Anyway, we'll get the fuel out of it, which there's a lot of. One fuel tank. How did it even come out? I didn't even see it. Oh, you just gotta, you gotta twist the back of it that way so that that clears the pinion and kind of... Tetris it out? Yeah, just kind of twist it out. Nice. So we've got our new wall row, It wasn't too four. bad now that it's flipping empty. Yeah, it's like 60 liters of fuel over there at the ground. Nice. So, got a new Walbro 245, just smack this in there, just toss it in, hold box and all, see you bye. Back in we go. Alright, I got the tank in and yeah, I really, really dislike the design of this fuel tank, that's absolutely horrible. It's a really, really terrible tank, don't like it at all. I don't like how close it is to everything. I don't like how it goes in. I don't like how it's mounted. I don't like anything about it. So, anyway, what do you do? What do you do? All right, old seal out. Put a new pinion seal in her. Stop some of this stuff going on. And uh, yeah, it should be good. I'm actually pretty stoked because I'm. I had it in my head that these weren't like a third member setup that we'd have to actually take the diff uh, hat off and pull the center out to get at the pinion gear to pull it out to do the uh, pinion seal. But we don't have to, which is good. So also got some loose fluid to go on the diff as well. So we'll have all new slippery stuff in there as well. Oil, oil's what I want. That's what I'm looking for, oil. Paparoo. Tap it in. So, new oil, new smooth shift stuff. Grouse. Get this uh, changed out. Then that's the diff done. Taking a few things off the list. The old pinion back together. That's that done. I've cracked the drain and the filler. Uh, pro tip for anyone playing at home before you ever do any diff or gearbox services.
always make sure you crack the filler bung before you empty <laughs> empty the diff or gearbox or whatever else you're doing. Because uh, you don't want to get stuck with that. That's, that's not nice when you've drained the diff and then you can't actually crack the filler bung. Not cool. Uncool. Diff oil actually looks really, really good. Don't know how long it's been in there. But looks like it's straight out of the bloody packet. So I guess we can take that as at least this diff is nice and healthy. There's nothing on the man gate. Just a bit of creep, so hey. All right, diff serviced. Ended up with probably more oil on the floor than we did in the diff because of these stupid funnels on these freaking Penrite bottles. We normally just use a transfer pump, but this customer insisted on supplying all his own stuff. So we ended up with that little bottle. So don't really usually have to use them, but I've got to say that those little cheap funnels that they come with are literally the worst things ever. So next time the Penrite rubs here, I'm going to rip him. <laughs> Tell him to freaking change those. Cause that sucks. That was literally the worst thing ever. Anyway, it's done. So we can steadily start moving forward. Um, that's going to be today though. Done a lot of late nights lately, so I'm going to have an early day and chill out for the afternoon. But um, yeah, we're at the point now where we can start getting drive shafts back in, uh, which I'll be interested to see at the angle that this sits now, whether our drive shaft will clear this bar. But we'll do that in the morning. We'll check that. Yeah, we're moving along. The next thing is uh, transfer case service, gearbox service, pull the motor back out, put the flex plate on it, sort out what we've got to sort out while it's out, get it back in, get our radiator in, do our radiator hoses, and then we just wait for our loom. Uh, we're gonna go see the um, trim trim guy tomorrow about getting a boot made for the shifter. But apart from that, it's ready to go. So like we, apart from a bit of wiring, getting our um, taco interface working, uh, we're getting very close, which is good. So um, I've been talking to the guys doing our loom for quite a while, trying to get it here, chasing it up. He's had it for quite a while. So hopefully it's here early next week, fingers crossed. Today's Thursday, so fingers crossed it's freaking here Monday because I'm going to be ready for it. It probably doesn't translate in the footage because of the way that I release content on each build now, but um, it's currently like the, what is it, 18th. So it's the 18th of March at the moment. Um, along with this patrol, we've got two other cars, which are meant to be, or well, three, um, three other cars, four cars total, which are meant to be finished for Rocky Nats, or before Rocky Nats, which is you know, not necessarily for Rocky Nats, they're not going to Rocky Nats, but they're meant to be finished um, this month. So we're already the 18th, we've got four cars still to finish. One of them still doesn't have a motor and gearbox in it at all. So yeah, in a bit of a hurry, bit on. All right guys, so this morning Rex has gone to the auto trimmer to get a trim made for our shifter, to get a boot made. So while he's gone doing that, I have sorted out some rad hoses. Got our top hose here, which is pretty much mostly made out of the old one. And the bottom rose though, which is also made out of the old one, which is nice, so managed to recycle. The thing with the LS is compared to the TB that was in there, it's not actually that far off as far as the inlets, outlets for the motor. The same, it's the same orientation for the radiator. The radiator is already the right layout. So, you know, that's pretty cool. Everything sort of just works. Uh, um, sorted out our brake booster line as well. Another thing that sort of just <laughs> works. And uh, then, yeah, our heaters come, our heater lines come straight out of here into the heater lines on the firewall, which has got an internal tap. So that just works as well. So again, it's a lot of this stuff, it's crazy. It just bloop, likes it, nice to work. No, nice and easy, seems to work. Um, I've also managed to get our bolt out that was snapped for the tow bar. Um, I just used the weld and nut on method and that managed to come out as well. So um, can go ahead and chuck the tow bar back on. That's that done. So with the rad hoses done, nut all done. Yeah, once Rex gets back with our new boot or maybe it, that might have to be a Monday thing. Old mate might need a few days to make it. Um, but yeah, once it gets back today, we'll rip this motor back out for the final time. Do what we've got to do with that sway bar disconnect and get the flex plate and stuff on the engine. Have that all ready to go, sort out the fuel lines while it's out, and then it can go back in for the final time. Can put our radiator hoses back in for the final time, put the exhaust on, stuff like that. It's good, Making good progress, I like it. And the last thing we've got to sort out, which might be a bit of a headache, is the pedal and that taco interface. Right, so tow bar's back on. It's relatively painless, which is good. Um, just looking at these rad hoses, what 
Rex has actually got to go for a Brisbane run this weekend. Um, so tomorrow he'll head down to Brisbane in the afternoon. So given that he's going for a run and uh, our loom's still not back anyway, we're gonna get him to take these two rad hoses that we've got dummied up here that work and um, just go and try and get some new hoses that are similar enough that they're gonna work just to put new hoses in it. I'd just rather not use the old hoses. You know, it's record radiator, it's new engine, you know, it's all, it's all new stuff. I just would rather put new hoses on it. Just for peace of mind. So we'll um, get Rex to take them with him and go get some new hoses. So this here is the tab we were talking about. It's the one that's fouling on the exhaust system, which is pushing it out, which means it's contacting the chassis as well. So it's meaning the headers are hitting that and the chassis at the, at the flange. So it doesn't really serve any purpose on the box. It's just there. So we're thinking about just cutting that off um, just so that we don't have to modify the pipes. So uh, we're probably gonna go ahead and do that while it's out as well. And that's pretty much the only thing we could foresee with the this area of being a problem with the exhaust. Apart from that, everything sort of goes in, except for obviously sway by disconnected fuel lines, which we already knew about. But the other thing is uh, we probably need to start looking at what wiring we can get out of here. Not that it really matters once the engine's in, it's all up high on the sides. So it's easy enough to get out once the engine's in anyway. So it's not a big deal, but um, it's another thing we need to look at doing very soon. So this is the other, pretty much one of the last things that I have to put on this engine to have it ready. And this is to reorientate this receiver for the uh, reservoir for the power steering fluid. So this allows me to turn it, get it on there, but it faces it back. I'm pretty sure I explained this before, but yeah, faces it back, which is up to our reservoir up here now. So we'll get that on there while the engine's out, get the flex plate on, then it's ready to go back in while Rex cuts this tab off and we can party. Big old milling wheel. Yeah, nice big old milling wheel. You can do magic. <laughs> you can have anything that you desire. All right, so that should be out of the way over that side of the steering arm and hopefully still long enough to connect back underneath the car where it needs to be. Was it much, much length on the lift? Yeah, it should be okay. Should be right. Just thinking I might be better to come with the other side of those. Oh, the brake lines. Oh yeah, that's nice. That'll work. That's um Out that'll, of the be, way. that'll be heaps of length now too. Yep. And it's away from that steering shaft. Got a few lines up here now. What's this? Yeah, they're a little bit that's the purge line, purge it goes line. into there. Alright, I, I do not. we do still have the purge off the VE. We have the whole purge set up. Ha! There's like no clearance at all, but there is a little. <laughs> well, is there none at all or is there a little? There's a little bit. It's almost none. Whoa, still no starter in there either yet. I was looking at that, that on the, that rib of the box there on the flange. Jesus! It's very, very close. Very taut. Uh, also, I don't know if I mentioned, but this manifold for the trans lines comes with the marks kit as well. Just some dash six out, which is nice and easy. That's where That's we had to clearance be. the uh, clearance Yeah, I had to clearance floor. the tunnel the floor a bit so that we could actually get a fitting on that one. I hit it with a hammer. Big old hammer. Why does that have... Do we have to weld that flange on? Is that the go? I uh, do not know. Maybe they leave that off to account for differences on orientation of the next section, maybe? Nope. I think maybe it's just a spacer. 
in case you need it. Yeah, maybe. Because what have we got? That's the hot dog. Mm -hmm. Hot dog, cat. <coughs> and then Gee. the mufflers oh, over the door. Mookfla. There you go, that one hasn't got. No flange. Oh, okay, so yeah, right. So these pieces, they'll merge on this side. That will take it, cross it over. Nope. No, that'll be for over the diff. Yes, yeah. Over the diff. I'm thinking of I'm thinking of 80 series where it's it crosses over to the driver's side, the yeah. patrols, the friggin' oh, 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 yeah. So that's over the diff. That means that must come from the muffler. Yeah, and the muffler's got a um, split. Um, it's just got a U-bolt and a split, so that just inserts into there. So yeah, I don't know why. Oh, just comes with the flange. We'll find out. It's looking pretty good. Yeah. The take. Mm, it's looking a bit tight. We'll take these bolts out and actually, actually bolt it up and see what it looks like. I'm going to put an oil filter on this thing while we're underneath it. All right. The exhaust is in. I think it's actually looking quite good. It's insane how much easier Patrols are than Land Cruisers when it comes to this. The old exhaust and the way the floor pan is and where the exhaust fits, but uh, all things considered, it fits really nicely. Like, as good as you could expect that off the shelf aftermarket exhaust to fit, it's really good. So, pretty happy with it. So there's a few little spots we're just gonna sort of clean up, uh, just for clearance reasons mostly. Um, and there's a few little hanger brackets and stuff we're gonna make up to have a few more hangers in there just to make it a bit sturdier, but looks really good. So a cat, muffler, and a hot dog at the back. So, and the hot dog's just a slip on. So if you, you know, if you wanted to, you could just slip the hot dog off and put a turn down on it or something. If you wanted to open it up a bit more, but that fits quite well. All right, guys, so we've got the exhaust back out for our dummy fit. We've refitted our tail shafts front and rear. So they're ready to go again. Uh, and we're going to do the trans service while we've got the exhaust out because it's much easier to get at the pan However, we can't actually do the fill level properly until we get it running uh, But that's all right. At least we can dump the oil and change the filter while the exhaust is out But anyway, that'll be for the next episode. I think that's probably enough for this episode So thank you for watching as always. Hope you're enjoying the build and we'll see you on the next one. Peace out. See you. Bye